As we all shelter in place, the support I've seen you give each other and our local eateries and businesses shows how strong our community can be. That's the spirit that made Check Please possible for the last 15 years. We hope you enjoy our season premiere recorded earlier this year. Cheers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Check Please Bay Area. <laughs> My tomahawk steak was this big. <laughs> so good. Well, that's another every time dish. I feel good about that. <laughs> I feel really good about that. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... At Redwood Credit Union, we help people achieve their financial goals together, offering customized full-service personal and business banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Redwood Credit Union. Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com. It's the national recognition for healthcare equality. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, Check Please Bay Area journeys back to 1776 with three very special guests. These revolutionaries are not throwing away their shot <laughs> to tell the stories of their favorite San Francisco eateries. Raise a glass to the four of us with the stars of San Francisco's Hamilton. When it comes to classic burgers, actor Donald Weber Jr. wants to be in the room where it happens. Like Aaron Burr, he's willing to wait for it Wait for it, wait for it. At his spot in the marina. <laughs> and after a long day of putting in the work playing one of the Schuyler sisters, actor Rebecca Covington indulges in Japanese American cuisine with crave worthy <laughs> steaks in the design district. But first, there's a million things actor Julius Thomas III hasn't done since he's busy playing Alexander Hamilton every night. Yes, the man is non stop. When he wants to relax, it's at an elegant south of market spot for modern North African cuisine. Named after its visionary Moroccan-born chef and decorated with one Michelin star, this is Morad. One runner, please. The vibe at Morad is really fun. It's a place where you want to be seen and you want to see other people. The ground floor, it's very festive, the ceilings are high, the chandeliers are big, but upstairs is quieter, it's more intimate. Hello, my name is Murad, and welcome to Murad. So when I started cooking, my goal was to preserve Moroccan food, bring it back, cook the stuff that I grew up eating back home, and then I started questioning those things. Why are we eating this way? Why are we making couscous this way? I realized that a lot of these things could change and I had to think outside of the box to take Moroccan food from traditional food, traditional cooking to uh, experimental and then we took it to the next level and then it evolved and now it's the food that I like to eat. You know, I've been here for a long time in San Francisco and I lived through a lot of phases of the city's life. So yeah, I try to be genuine. I try to follow my, my instinct and, and hopefully end up in a place that is good. All right, first I just have to say I am, I'm not a fangirl of anything but Hamilton. I absolutely <laughs> am in love with it. it, is, it I've gone twice and it's been the best theatrical experience of my life. So kudos to all of you <laughs> for your yeah. participation in this amazing, amazing piece of work. So, so how long have you lived in San Francisco, Julius? I've been here for about a year and it's been fantastic. Right. And Julius, how did you find Morad? Actually, funny story, my agents sent me a gift card to just say, here, congratulations for booking Hamilton. Here's a lovely restaurant that we've heard mm -hmm. a lot about. Go. 
And so your first experience was? It was wonderful, and it made me want to go back again and again and again, and I have. And <laughs> what do you usually start with? Oh, I, every time, this is an every time dish, I have to have the Bastilla. Mm -hmm. It is delicious. Just uh -huh. phyllo dough that wraps around duck and almond. Uh, the, the phyllo sort of melts in your mouth. The duck is sweet and savory, and then the almond gives it that nice crunch for a uh, different texture. They top it off with creme fraiche and some quince paste, and yeah. I'm just in heaven. So And that's really one of their signature dishes. It's delicious. You Did have you have, have that when you went? No, I, have to, I, I went and I got the oysters. I wish I I knew. I, I wish I'd known about that. Uh, the oysters were fantastic. And, um, you know, I went alone and I was sitting at the bar and, and you know, you kind of just take in this whole space and the way that they have it lit, it's so wonderful. So you feel like you're not just having oysters, you're having right. like oysters. You know what I mean? So, they were very slurpable. Yes. <laughs> well, what did you have with it? I know this place is known for drinks. So I splurged a little bit. Mm -hmm. I had a uh, whistle pig. It's a 15 year mm -hmm. oh, whistle wow. pig, you know, you and did. I had it neat, yeah. you know, because I felt like this place whiskey. deserved it. You know, yeah. it was a whiskey. like uh, a sipping whiskey. Is yes. It? Okay. I mean, it was so uh -huh. good. Rebecca, what was your experience? I loved it. I didn't have an appetizer, though. I just had an entree and a side. Okay. Are we on entrees yet? Sure, or, okay. go ahead, you start. We'll Shocker, I had we... the beef. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, I have to say, we're gonna do some restaurants that are beef driven, yes. right? No vegetarian, <laughs> sorry guys out there, if it's not a vegetarian show. <laughs> so you started out. It was their braised short rib. Mm -hmm and I got a side of cannellini beans. Mm -hmm. Heavens! <laughs> I have, it, they were like cannellini beans with breadcrumbs and a feta cheese foam. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanna know how to make foam these days. Like, <laughs> that. it was delicious. And I had a strawberry cocktail. It was like Fruity Pebbles Punch. It was yeah. pretty dangerous for a lunch, <laughs> but it was really good. Those beans really are uh, another one of my, I will get them every time Those you go. Those beans. It's like a, the feta cheese, I think they called it like a feta mousse, and then there's like a tomato ragu yeah. on it. It crunches, it's, the beans are tender and cooked perfectly. It's yeah. so, so right. tasty. Yeah. So I'm glad you tried also part those. of the dish that I had, which was uh, okay. the braised beef. But mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, this black garlic that they kind of put around the outside, okay. it's almost like a bowl plate combination. You know, you take a little bit of the, of the braised beef and it just falls off mm -hmm. of itself. And uh. you know, it actually melted in my mouth. And mm -hmm. I just thought to myself, I was like, well, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, just for that dish. What about really? you, Julius? Yeah, and this was my first time with uh, Moroccan cuisine. I, I did have the braised beef one of the times that I've been, but this time I decided on the lamb. Mm -hmm. And it comes two ways. There's sort of a traditional cut where it is medium rare mm -hmm. and really delicious and tender and seasoned very well. And then there's also a portion that eats like the braised short ribs. Okay. Yeah. What I loved about that dish though is that it was a piece of art because there were okay. so many different things on the plate like um, pomegranate seeds mm -hmm. and puree of root vegetables mm -hmm. that sort of felt like comfort and fall. It was so good. Yeah. Yeah. And they so have good. an absolutely stupendous wine list. Yeah, really. I saw this uh, glass mm -hmm. case yeah. filled with wine. It was gorgeous. Uh, I do wish I had looked at that wine menu now that I know more <laughs> about it. Uh, but I did go into well, dessert land. Well, if you land. don't know, now you now know. Now I know. You know. Oh. Oh, uh, I went Mr. to Dessertland President. too. I went into Dessertland. <laughs> right. So I had what they call uh, donut puffs. And so it comes with a caramel sauce and also like a chocolate sauce. And an orange. And, and an, an orange, orange sauce. sauce. Yeah, yeah. So that's what it is. Yeah. It's like a honey orange. Yes. It's yeah, like a honey orange sauce. Honey yeah. orange I had them as well. Yeah. Yeah. You had them as well? You had the donuts too? Yeah. Yes, 100%. <laughs> yes. So I've had the donuts before and they okay. are fantastic. But this time, this most recent time, I tried the honey and almond dessert. Mm -hmm. okay. And it shows up in front of you as sort of this like mound of white fluff. And it's very uh, vaguely described on the menu. So my first bite into it, I discovered that it was like an ice cream and it mm -hmm. immediately melted in my mouth. Mm -hmm. um, each bite you're going, what is this? Oh mm -hmm. my goodness, what is that? Because there's orange blossom and sort of a van vanilla granita and it just keeps you guessing all the way to the end when you're like, oh, what was that? It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this is not an inexpensive place to dine, is it? And I am the miser of the group who thought <laughs> it is pricey, but absolutely worth right, it. Worth it's it. a splurge. Yes. Well, this is your spot, Julius. Wrap it up for us. Delicious food, well worth the price. Go, go, go. Okay, and Rebecca? Um, delicious food, great cocktails. I'll be back. <laughs> and Donald? Don't be afraid to sit at the bar. It's wonderful. Get the braised beef.
<laughs> All right. If you would like to try Murad, it's located on New Montgomery at Minna Street in San Francisco. It's open for dinner every night with lunch on weekdays. And the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $70. Like summer in the city, someone in a rush, next to someone looking pretty. On any given night, you might find Rebecca playing Angelica or Eliza, the Skyler sisters, and Peggy. <laughs> Her upscale retreat in the design district offers expertly butchered steaks with a sophisticated Japanese twist. This is Niku Steakhouse. The vision that we have for a guest coming into Niku for the first time is to not think of it as a traditional steakhouse. We wanted to design it where it was an interactive cooking experience. My name is Dustin Falcon, uh, and I'm the executive chef of Niku Steakhouse here in the design district. Niku started between Cash Fang and Guy Crims, our two owners. Cash really wanted to bring Japanese beef and a Japanese steakhouse style to the U.S and Guy Crims is a master butcher and had all these different connections. And so Japanese A5 beef, there's different grades A4, A5. We only use A5, and it's a mixture of the yield of the meat and the marbling as well. So it has to be over a beef marbling score of five and up, and most of our A5 that we use is all 10 to 12. And the marbling on it is ultra, ultra fine. So we are centered around beef, but the rest of the menu is not an afterthought at all. That's where we really get to be creative and play around. We use ingredients that are really true to Northern California. Since our beef is all the way from Japan, we want to mix in something definitely local to where you get those unique flavors that you can't get anywhere else. So we really try to build a different experience and we want guests to come and talk to us. Ask us any questions that you have and really get involved and kind of see where your food is coming from. Okay, now this is a question. No, you, nobody else has to know. Okay. Do you enjoy playing Angelica ah! or Eliza <laughs> and Peggy? <laughs> um, my answer to that usually is I enjoy what I'm playing for the night because right. they're all so much fun right. that whenever I just take a dive, I'm like, oh, I love this. And then it's like <laughs> I dive into another one. I'm like, I love this one yeah. too. And that's so. hard to be, have to know all those roles and play all those roles. She's yeah, brilliant at all yeah. three. She yeah. is. She's I would brilliant. imagine so. <laughs> so in terms of steak, you mentioned that you love meat beef. and beef yes. on, that, <laughs> on that last restaurant. So now this is your restaurant, the Steakhouse. Yes. This is one of the best steakhouses that I've ever experienced in my life. I really felt an elevated experience when I walked in the door. It didn't feel stuffy though. Right. It did feel um, very purposeful, very modern. It was just everything I wanted. What did you have, Julius? Uh, we pulled up to the bar and we had the Bloom cocktail and it was delicious. And I wouldn't normally go for it because it has like aloe and mm -hmm. mole spices and yes. things that you wouldn't think would right. normally yes. go into a drink. It's delicate and it's really interesting to your palate yeah. as well. Right. So yeah, I had something called the, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I had something called the 36th Street. Interrupt him, interrupt him. Oh, yeah, 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 the 36th Street I want to see a little Aaron Burr well, here. Well, you know what, though, it's so funny because like. Come on, no so dueling funny. pistols. Well, what's really fun about that is that we're actually really good friends. And so like, <laughs> you know, at the end, everybody's like, you know, in tears, how could you? And I'm like, well, I mean, it's easy because it we just probably hug after. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going for dinner? I'm going to Niku. And did you have anything to drink? Yes, I had a cocktail. It was called the uh, 36 Chamber. It's kind of a whiskey forward drink, but it's, it's also got like a Japanese influence to it where it's like the, a little sweet as sake kind of mm -hmm. is, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's orange with this big old piece of ice in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that, it was so good. And what did you have? Um, I had a cocktail called the Uncharted Waters and it's their egg white cocktail. Mm -hmm. I liken it to a whiskey sour, mm -hmm. and it's topped with black sesame seeds. It's a mm -hmm. little tart, nice. the egg white I love. I know that it's a divider among people, mm -hmm. but I really enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> not yeah. for me. Maybe not be having an egg white in my so, drink. I know, but <laughs> and what do you get when you go? Okay, there's a couple different things. If you're okay. looking for like a celebration, maybe something that you'll do once and probably never do again, <laughs> <laughs> Once you get the tab, um, I did the A5 Wagyu tasting the flight. platter. Yeah. Because I had never had it. Well, and, and there are different breeds right. of the Wagyu beef. And so. you only get, I think it's four ounces each. 
because it's so rich and so mm -hmm. heavy, but they melt in your mouth and it's literally like nothing I've ever tasted. Right. But you can also do their happy hour at the bar and get oh. a burger. See, there we yeah. go. Yeah, and so yeah, I definitely enjoy the burger. They do the burger of the month, and I, when I went, it was just like a wagyu beef burger. It was juicy. Yes. What did you have? I tried uh, the bone marrow and oxtail Ooh. for the first time. I've never had bone Heavens. marrow, and it shows up in a bone, and it's really cool yeah. that you get to scoop it out with a crostini. Now the crostini is basted in sort of its own fat, and the bone marrow itself is sort of fatty and buttery and rich. Uh, and I thought together they sort of overpowered each other, mm -hmm. so we ended up just eating them sort of Separate. by themselves. They right. got they all got finished, <laughs> 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 but just sort of we made two dishes out of it. Uh -huh. What did you have? Don? I didn't have any appetizers. I went straight for the A5 tomahawk <laughs> steak. <laughs> yes. And yeah, it was huge. My tomahawk steak was this big. He had a side of beef. I did. And then? I had a side of beef and I did not want for anything after that <laughs> for probably the next five days. I mean, I was full to the tip degree. Mm. And so the beef was, first of all, incredible. The steak was incredible. But I also had what they call their uh, Parker House Rolls. Oh my gosh, I had those. They were now, out of them when I went. Oh no! So I wanted to try them. Oh. I, so I asked <laughs> uh, very nicely if I could take a set of rolls home. Would that's you why they were out. See, yeah, right, yeah, that's right, why they were right, out. Right. You got my order. And that's you do right. have to pay for the rolls, right. but it is worth it. The butter, the way it melts on there, mm. the bread, like it just pulls off. You don't even need a knife. Oh, oh no, I'm so sad I didn't. Oh, yeah. I, I know. Well, you have to go back. <laughs> and it's so a back. Back. Okay. compliment yeah. for that yeah. steak. To, right. you know. Yes. <laughs> and what else did you have? I, I had the, I think it's lassen trout mm -hmm. is how you say it. Absolutely. And it's a generous portion of fish. Uh, I think it just needed a touch bit more of salt, but it was mm -hmm. delicious. Served crispy skin up. And there are these potatoes that come with a pho spiced mm -hmm. ranch. They were crispy on the outside, really tender and hot on the inside, just like I like my french fries. <laughs> <laughs> and you dip it in the faux ranch, and I, I'm not usually a ranch guy, but this yeah. house-made ranch was delicious. Yes. So that's another every time dish. So you don't yeah. have to get steak. There are options. Oh, yeah, if yeah, you yeah. go, there's yeah. fish. I, I, you I mean, I'm steak, judging you on, on getting fish. I also had steak, don't worry. <laughs> I mean, that was my that. plate. <laughs> my, my dining partner got some beef, and you know. Okay. Next time she plays Eliza, I'm just saying there might be a lot a little bit of dissension here among the ranks. So, so yeah. did it live up to your expectations for oh, the Oh yes, the yeah. food was delicious. We cleared every plate that we could, but she is pricey. She, mm -hmm. she is pricey. Yeah. Yes. She is. Yes. It's mm -hmm. a celebration night. It mm -hmm. is um, mm -hmm. a treat yourself affair, Absolutely. if you will. This is a great like date spot. Oh, you never run out of things to talk about in mm -hmm. this restaurant. Yes. All right, Rebecca, your spot, give us a quick summary. Dining room or bar, you can't go wrong. It's an expensive night, but there's lots to choose from. All right, and Donald. Get something that has an A5 in front of it. <laughs> uh, you won't regret it and get those rolls. <laughs> all right, and Julius. Great date spot and you will not be bored at all. If you would like to try Niku Steakhouse, it's located on Division Street at Rhode Island in San Francisco. It's open for dinner every night and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $90. Character Aaron Burr may hold his cards close, but Donald knows the world is wide enough for everyone to enjoy his bistro in the marina. For perfect American cheeseburgers and a laid back atmosphere, this is Coswell's. So, the ambiance of Coswell's, we designed it in Art Deco. We've always just tried to be comfortable and approachable. My name is Adam Rosenblum. I am the executive chef and owner of Coswell's on Chestnut Street in San Francisco. Coswell's was never open as a burger restaurant. The burger was actually the last menu item to hit our menu. And somehow it just took off and it's, it's been going ever since. Is that good, buddy? In my opinion, a good burger is all about the, the meat and the bun. Those are the things you can't really hide. So like any good sandwich, the quality of the meat is where it's at. Our signature burger is two four ounce patties, five dot ranch meat. We grind it in-house daily. Sesame seed bun, lettuce, onion, lacto-fermented pickle. We make everything in-house. We have a really nice octopus dish. Uh, we have several different sandwiches from crispy chicken to a vegetarian falafel burger. So we're, we're not just burgers. 
We've always just tried to be a local neighborhood restaurant in the marina and really embrace the local people and be that place that people can come a couple times a week, not just for special occasions. So, Donald, we've been kind of high end here, mm -hmm. really high end with yep. the two previous restaurants. Wonderful restaurants. Um, <laughs> and now we're going more casual. Let's go. Huh. Let's, <laughs> let's go there. <laughs> when do you go eat at Coswell's? Well, I'll tell you what. So one night I was extremely hungry after a show. Right. I looked on Uber Eats. And I saw this place, it was rated high on Uber Eats, and uh, I wanted a burger. Mm -hmm. So I got it delivered and took one bite out of this burger. And I was like, wait, <laughs> no way. <laughs> and I took another bite and I was like, it's the best burger I've ever had. And that's huge to say that, especially when it's been delivered. Leslie, I've had burgers <laughs> my entire life. <laughs> Me too. I feel as though I am the Burger King. <laughs> And, and they also have like the special sauce on there, right? So, you know, I mean, no burger is complete without a special sauce. And their Coswell special sauce, whatever it is, it just, it is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So after my first Uber Eats experience, I thought to myself, I was like, well, I must go to the place. I was like, maybe this was just a fluke, you know? Right. I gotta go and I gotta go see it for myself. I walked in and you see the guys back there, you know, when they're making the burgers, you just feel like you're at, you know, maybe just like a burger joint, you know, right. but it's, it's a little it's more excited. elevated. It's a, a little, little more, more elevated. Yeah. You're definitely going to a place where you can have wine and you can have, you know, beer that is on tap right. and all that. Right. Um, I chose to go with this Boylan's root beer, which mm -hmm. is right out of a bottle. Right. And I had fries along with my burger, but I got to tell you the highlight is this Everything pales burger. to the burger. <laughs> all right. So I have been twice. Mm -hmm. I am not a big fan of American cheese, so I had the Americana burger, but I switched out the cheese, mm -hmm. which was delicious. Um, the first time I got my burger with onion strings, mm -hmm. I didn't enjoy them so much. Uh -huh. More breading than onion for me. <laughs> but the second time I got it, my burger with fries, and I thought it was delicious. But the star of my meal was their cornbread. Oh, oh, not the burger, the cornbread. <laughs> oh, it came out warm and that butter melted on it. I was trying to like cut it real small so I could continue to right. eat the cornbread. <laughs> Can't wait to uh, try it was so good. It was, it was now, so I'm good. I'm just waiting for Julius so to jump in here. Uh, <laughs> we can't get a word in edgewise. Well, yes. Love All right. Place, so right? we are about to have a descent. The, okay. the kind of descent okay. that our great country okay, was okay, founded okay, on. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. Now it's getting good. It's okay. getting good. Because <laughs> I also went to Coswell's, of course, and um, I got the OG Mosto burger, I believe is what it's called. Oaxacan cheese and poblano peppers and, you know, lots oh. of things that I thought were going to be really delicious. Okay. And I was underwhelmed. Underwhelmed. Oh, I did love the onion strings. I thought that was the second best thing I had at the place. Really? Yeah. But uh, the star for me of the day was the pork chop. The ah, pork chop. It was okay. perfectly cooked, beautiful grill mark lines on it, um, seasoned really well, uh, served with an interesting sort of spetzel and beet slaw mm -hmm. that sort of bled into each other. It didn't make for a very pretty plate, but <laughs> <laughs> but I really loved the pork chop, the burger. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you you got to go with the straight burger. Yeah, the, Their the Americana, Americana burger, I think, is what they're known Don't for. Don't get all fancy. Yeah, yeah. If you, you, you want to keep it with them, it, yeah. you yeah. got to keep it you plain. Can. I yeah. also tried the um, the mac and cheese, which, you know, mac and cheese for African American folks is like a staple <laughs> of every holiday. It's something that we take very seriously. And normally I don't go to a restaurant and try macaroni and cheese. I did at Coswell's and I really enjoyed it. So that is a plus. That's I will high give praise. I will give yeah. that to them. Mm -hmm. did, did you have anything to drink with that? You guys I think I had a cab franc. It's a two sided um, menu, right? You got one yeah. side is menu options, one side is drinks. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. The, and the red wine menu. was completely fine mm -hmm. with my meal. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 interesting. I did have the deviled eggs. Um, I also had tomato soup, and oh, then yes, pork. I had yeah, lots of meal. things. It was it was. <laughs> I don't know. I call this like fusion confusion because oh. <laughs> there were just so many things happening on the menu. And then I went back and I looked after we had finished our meal and I saw that the, the chef had taken inspirations from, I want to say, four or five different types of cuisines. Right. And I just thought that it was oh. a little unfocused for me. I just wanted a little more focus. You guys, <laughs> this is like a local burger joint, right? Yeah, yeah. you got to go, you gotta go back and you, you got to get, get the Americana, Americana burger. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to go back for brunch because I read the, br oh. the brunch menu and it seems uh, a lot more focused and a lot more of the speed of what I was gonna mm -hmm. want. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna try the brunch. Try the brunch. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, 
I really could not find any fault. In you go this for place. a burger and a beer, man. Yeah. Every time I've gone, I've gotten the burger, which right. is great. It's just right. for me a big portion. Right. I took home half the burger, but it's delicious. Right. I also took home an additional side of cornbread. <laughs> 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 All right, your spot. Give us a quick summary. Dog. San Francisco, if you get a chance to go and have a burger, burger, <laughs> go get an Americana burger. It's I'm honestly the best burger I've ever had in my life. All right, and Rebecca? Go with an appetite. The burger won't disappoint. But please also get the cornbread. <laughs> and Julius? I'm going to go back and try the burger. All right. <laughs> if you would like to try Coswell's, it's located on Chestnut Street and Divisadero in San Francisco. It's open for lunch and dinner every day with brunch on the weekends, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $35. And that wraps up our Hamilton show. I have to thank my incredible guests, Julius Thomas, who told us the story of a night with elegant Moroccan fare at Murad, Rebecca Covington, who will always be satisfied with the premium meats artfully prepared at Niku Steakhouse, and Donald Weber Jr., who brought us into the room where delicious burgers happen in the marina at Coswell's. Join us next time when three more guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Raise a glass to, to the, the four, four of us. <laughs> <laughs>